Hey everybody, it's Ian Young with Lifetime Photography and I am long overdue for another tutorial for you guys. So today I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys about blending multiple exposures to create an HDR image using Photomatix Pro 5 as well as Photoshop. So Protomatix Pro 5 can be downloaded as a trial version online. You have a free trial that you can subscribe to. It will give you a watermark on the image after you're done blending the images together. But, you know, it's still a great program and you can try it out and see if it's something that you even like. So just to give you guys a quick background, if you're not familiar what HDR is, it stands for High Dynamic Range, and it is simply taking multiple exposures of one photo and blending them all together to create one photo where it is properly exposed. So today I'm gonna go ahead and uh, demo this with a photo that I recently took back home of an old Victorian mansion. And I went ahead and I took over five exposures of the photo. So as you can see, this one is extremely dark. This is the dark exposure that will help to bring in the sky then I have one that's a little bit darker and then one that's a little bit lighter and then I'll have one that's generally at about a normal exposure and then a very overexposed image as well and essentially what I'm going to do with these images is select all of them and I shoot in RAW and JPEG I'm going to select the RAW file because I'm going to do more um, deconstructive editing after Photomatix and Photoshop so I'm going to select these exposures all of them and then I'm simply gonna drag them all into Photomatix Pro 5 and then I want to merge for HDR and tone mapping fusion and I will simply click OK I have my source images all here I'll click OK once more and then I want to go ahead now I do have the ability to go ahead and kind of auto align these images um, and I can put down my preset and what I want aligned um, you know, even if you do shoot on a tripod with five images, you know, there's still going to be some sort of movement. So it's better to go ahead and have that done. And then I also, you know, I can reduce the, the noise. And then I also have the ability to control the deghosting. And I definitely want to do that. Deghosting is where I can kind of make the images blend better. If I have, you know, a tree that's been moving and there's a bunch of leaves, um, I can go ahead and control that with my opacity slider if I have deghosting checked. And so I'm going to do that right now and it's going to go ahead and combine these images. And once it's done combining them, the image will pull up and as you can see up here at the top on the left hand corner, I have the deghosting slider. And I'm going to zoom in here really quick and just show you what I was talking about. As you can see, these trees are very blurry because there are five exposures. It was windy outside. They were moving around, but I can auto correct that. And I'm going to just pull my deghosting up to be very strong. And as you can see, it's corrected that. It looks great. It looks a lot more natural. The image is a little crooked, but I can adjust that later in post editing. I also have the ability to adjust the brightness at the bottom, but I'm going to keep it at that. So once it's done doing the deghosting, the image will pull up now as an HDR image. And as you can see on the right hand side, we have a lot of presets that we can choose from. So we have the default, which is gonna make it look as natural as possible. And then we have some other very funky presets and just fun ones that we can do. Um, it just all depends on the style that you're going for. And you know, sometimes like this one, for example, in the default style, it doesn't look the greatest. Um, and I'm going to have this more of a photo art image so I can, you know, have some fun and play with these different presets. And for this one, I actually really do like the planetary feel because it really brings out the, um, the vibrant colors and the detail on the house just looks really cool when you zoom in. And so this has a lot of potential. And then on my left hand side, I do have the ability to um, play around with the strength of the HDR, the color saturation, the tone compression, and the detail and whatnot. There's a lot of different presets. If you're doing interior HDR, there's interior presets, there's monochromatic, a lot of ones that you can play with depending on the kind of feel that you want. So again, as I said, I can adjust the strength of the HDR. Saturation's a little too much, so I can pull that down as needed. Tone compression, how much detail I want in there, a lot of presets that I have to work with to make this overall effect, which is really cool. A lot of room for edits in here. And what I will essentially do is save this image with this preset, but I will then go ahead and open it in Photoshop to do some further editing because the sky right now, as you can see, is not that great. And I can actually smooth the highlights to kind of 
desaturated, it was a little too saturated for me. And I will actually, in my second part of this tutorial, be putting in a different sky, so stick around for that as well. But for now, I'm just going to smooth those highlights to have the sky not so vibrant. I'm going to go ahead and apply it now, and that will save the image for us. And once it is done loading with the desired preset of your choice, it will just pop up as a regular image. And we do have the ability to sharpen it. And I always like to do strong sharpening because that will help with the leaves, bring in a little bit more detail. And then I'm going to go ahead and just save this image. And I would strongly recommend to save it as a TIFF because you can do a lot more constructive and deconstructive editing on this image without losing file size because the other option is just as a JPEG. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this image and then stay tuned for my second part of my tutorial. I'm going to do a little bit of some basic edits on this photo in Lightroom and then I'm going to open it up in Photoshop and show you guys how to do some further creative editing for some photo art design. But this is the image we've ended up with. It looks really great. Uh, Photomatics, in my opinion, does a great job. So try it out and visit their website. And thanks for watching.